everybody, my name is Elisa. Welcome to my channel if you've not been here before. This channel is all about me creating my dream wardrobe from scratch and I'm taking you along for the ride so maybe you can recreate some of the pieces that I make at home. This week I'm going to hone in specifically on the recreate some of the things that I make at home part of my intro. I get so many questions from you about how I draft my own patterns. And let me tell you, there is a lot of history there. I actually went to fashion school when I was a teenager. Since then, I have forgotten a lot about the textbook ways and geometry of how to draft proper patterns from scratch. So I cannot remember all of the formulas to create jackets, trousers, dresses, you name it. In the last couple of years since I started to pick up sewing again, however, I started to draft my own patterns again as well. I watched a lot of YouTube videos, read blog posts, and also obviously had a look back into my books and drawings back from school. So today what I want to give you is a key to unlock a lot of this complex and oftentimes intimidating pattern drafting world. And the way to do this is to create your own bodice block from scratch. You may have heard me use this word quite a lot in my past videos and it is because once you have a bodice block you can basically make almost any other pattern that you could possibly come up with for the upper half of your body as well as dresses. The tutorial that I'm going to show you today is heavily inspired by a blog post on In The Folds which I first came across through a video by Wendy from With Wendy. It's a great tutorial to draft your own bodice block however there were a few things that I didn't quite agree with. So what I'm going to show you today is based on that blog post with my own tweaks and changes to it because I think it improves the process a little bit. Again, just to reiterate, my method is not the method, it's not the textbook method, it's an amalgamation of many, many different ways of how to draft a bodice block and this is what I have found works best for myself. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump straight in. We will start by taking our own measurements in the correct way. Let me show you how. So before we start, it's important to understand that we will draw our pattern on the half, which means we will only draw half of our front as well as half of our back. Let's start by drawing the grid. Since the front half will be on the left, this is where your center front will be. And as the back side of your bodice will be on the right, this is where your center back will be, with the side seam in the middle, just for you to have an overall orientation of what we're going to do. 
So to construct our center back line, simply draw a line parallel to the right edge of your piece of paper. On that line, take your nape of neck to waist measurement and mark it. Mark the upper point as 1 and the lower point as 2. Extend the line from point 1 by 1.5 cm and mark as 3. Next, let's mark the bust line. Take your nape of neck to bust measurement and measure from point 1 downwards on your vertical center back line. Mark that as point 4. Square out from point 4 to draw the bust line. On your bust line, take half of your bust circumference plus the distance between your front and back piece. We will use a distance of 10 cm. Mark the end of that line as 5. Next, let's mark our waistline. Square out from point 2 by the same amount as your bust line distance. Mark the end of that line as 6. To draw your center front, align your ruler vertically with point 6 and 5 and draw a line until it roughly passes point 3 on your center back line. Mark that point as 7. Connect point 3 and 7 to draw your shoulder line. Next, let's mark the arm side line. Measure downwards from point 1 by your arm side measurement plus half a centimeter and mark as point 8. Square out from point 8 until you reach your center front line. Mark that as point 9. Now we have our grid done. Let's start by constructing our back neckline. Divide your neck circumference by 5. Mark that distance inwards on your shoulder line and mark that as point 10. Connect point 1 and point 10 with your curved ruler to finish your back bodice neckline. Make sure you start your curve with a 90 degree angle on your center back line. This way you can be sure you don't have a dip or a tip in your center back neckline. Let's move on to drafting our back shoulder seam. Take your arm side measurement, divide it by 5 and subtract half a centimeter. Measure this distance down from point 1 and mark as point 11. Square out from point 11. This is just a guideline so it doesn't have to be a specific length. Take your shoulder measurement and add 1.5 centimeters. This is the allowance for the shoulder dart. Use a ruler to pivot from point 11 with that measurement in mind until you cross the guideline you just drew. Mark that as point 12. And this is how you create your shoulder seat. Up next, let's draft our shoulder dart. Find the midpoint on your shoulder between point 10 and point 12. Mark that as point 13. Make a mark 15 centimeters down from point one on your center back line and square out a guideline. Draw a line perpendicular to that guideline so you cross point 13. Where the two guidelines intersect, measure three centimeters to the right and mark as point 14. On your shoulder seam, measure 1.5 centimeters to the right from point 13. Mark that as point 15. Now connect points 13, 14, and 15 to draw your dart. Now let's draw our side seam. Take one fourth of your bust circumference and measure inwards on your arm side line. Mark that as point 16. Square downwards from point 16 to your waistline to draw a guideline where your side seam is going to be later. Mark the end as point 17. Now we can focus on constructing our back arm hole. On your arm side line, measure your back width measurements divided by two plus half a centimeter. Mark that as point 18. Square upwards in a vertical line from point 18 until you reach the guideline you drew out from point 11. Mark that as point 19. Draw a 2.5 cm long line in a 45 degree angle from point 19 and mark that as point 20. Connect points 16, 20 and 12 with your curved ruler to finish the armhole. Alright, so we're almost done with our back bodice. So to finish the back bodice, we will have to calculate the darts in the entirety of our pattern. So for that, we will have to take our waist measurement and subtract it from our bust measurement. Once you've done that, divide your answer by two because we're drafting a pattern for only half of our body. I personally like to distribute it so that I have more in the darts and less in the side seam. So what I will do is I will divide it so that I have two centimeters in the side seam and three centimeters each in my darts. So to actually construct your back dart, find the midpoint between point 8 and 18 and mark as 21. Square downwards from point 21 until you meet your waistline. Mark this point as 22. Mark 1.5 centimeters on either side of point 22. Connect these with point 21 to account for a 3 centimeter dart. Now measure 1 centimeters to the right from point 17 to mark where your side seam is going to hit. Connect that point with point 16 to draw in your side seam. 
All right, so now we can move on to constructing our front bodice. We'll begin like we did in the back with our neckline. We repeat the same steps we took in our back bodice by dividing our neck circumference by five, but this time we subtract half a centimeter. Measure on your shoulder line from 0.7 and mark it as 0.23. On your center front line, take the same measurement and mark it as 24 down from 0.7. Connect points 23 and 24 with your curved ruler. Now we'll have to mark our bust apex. Take your apex to apex measurement and divide it by 2. Measure the distance into your bodice from 0.5 on your bust line and mark that as 0.25. Draw a line parallel to your center front, crossing 0.25 all the way up to your shoulder line. Mark the beginning of that line at the waist as 26 and the end on your shoulder line as 27. Now let's draft our front shoulder dart. On your center front line, measure half a centimeter upwards from 0.24. Mark that as 0.28. Square out from 0.24 in an arbitrary length, but long enough so it passes the end of your shoulder. This is just a guideline. Now let's get to the calculation of the shoulder dart. And this is something that I took specifically from the Indefaults blog. The formula here is that for every four centimeters over 88 centimeters of bust circumference, you will add 0.4 centimeter increments to seven centimeters for your dart. And for every four centimeters below that 88 centimeter bust circumference, you will subtract 0.4 centimeter increments. Start at 0.23 of your neckline and with your ruler, pivot until you cross the guideline you drew from 0.28 with your total shoulder measurement in mind. Mark the end of that line as 0.29. On your apex guideline, measure upward half the distance from 0.25 on your arm side line and mark that as 0.30. Connect 0.30 with 0.27, stopping when you meet your new shoulder seam. Mark the new end point as 31. Now square out in a 90 degree angle to your apex guideline from point 31 with the width of your dart calculation. Say your bust circumference is 92, then it's 7.5 centimeters. Mark that as point 32. Now connect point 30 with point 31, point 30 with point 32, and correct your shoulder seam by connecting point 32 with point 29. Finish the front shoulder dart and erase your previous guidelines for a clean look. Now let's mark our front side seam. Mark one fourth of your bust circumference and add 2.5 centimeters ease on your arm side line into your bodice. Mark that as point 33. Up next, we can finish our armhole. Mirror your back armhole by measuring the distance from point 16 to point 18. Take that measurement and square inwards from point 33. Mark it as point 34. From point 34, draw a guideline upwards until you reach your shoulder. From point 34, square out in a 45 degree angle by a distance of 2.5 centimeters. Mark that as point 35. Connect point 29, 35 and 33 to draw your front armhole. To draw in our finished side seam, we will need to remember our dart calculation back from step 2. Draw a vertical guideline downwards from point 33. Measure 1 centimeter into your bodice on your waistline and mark it as point 34. Connect point 34 with point 33 and draw your side seam. We're almost done, let's construct our front waist dart. Measure 1.5 centimeters to either side of point 26 and connect these points upwards until you reach your bust line. Now the last thing to do is to extend your center front line by 2 centimeters from point 6 downwards and mark that as point 34. Redraw your entire waistline by squaring out from point 34 all the way to your center back line by point 2. Now you can retrace all of the outer lines of your bodice and you're done. So once you have your bodice block drawn out, there are a few things you can do to check that everything matches up and is in line. I know for a fact that with this method that I just showed you, you will have to make an incision in your front shoulder dart and line up the two seams. You will likely see that the second half of your shoulder is a little bit higher than the first half of your shoulder, and this is expected. Just trim it back to make the match. The other thing that you want to make sure is that your front shoulder and your back shoulder are the same distance. And that, my friends, is it. This is how you draw a bodice block. I really feel so glad that I finally got the chance to show you how I make my own bodice blocks. And I really think that this could help you unlock the whole world of pattern drafting for yourself. With this bodice block, you will be able to create almost any other garment that you could come up with. And it's going to help you to create garments that actually fit you really well, which ultimately will make you wear them more often and love them even more. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope I see you next time. Bye.